Hello, my name is Eduardo Pavez, and this talk is about region adaptive graph Fourier transforms for 3D point clouds. Uh, I will start by motivating the 3D point cloud compression problem, then I will describe our proposed solution. Uh, I will end with some compression experiments and conclusions. Uh, 3D point clouds are visual representations of objects, people, outdoor scenes, and historical artifacts. Applications include in immersive communication, remote sensing, and autonomous vehicles. Uh, since the technology to capture point clouds has matured enough, now they can be acquired at large scale and size, and in also in real time. Therefore, there is an emerging need for compression of this type of data. Point clouds are represented by points in 3D space, uh, which are basically given by their XYZ coordinates. These points also have attributes such as color, which are denoted by capital A. Uh, this work is about a transform for compression of color attributes. The graph Fourier transform is one of the earliest techniques used for compression of point clouds. Uh, a graph is a list of nodes uh, here denoted by circles, edges denoted by lines between the circles, and edge weights. Uh, which represent the strength of these links. The graph Laplacian is this matrix here that encodes sort of uh, the graph relations. And the graph Fourier transform are the eigenvectors of the Laplacian. Uh, a graph signal is a function on the nodes of a graph. And the goal of graph, sin graph signal processing is analyzing, studying, and compressing these signals. And one of the main tools for, for that purpose is the graph Fourier transform. Uh, this, this approach has been used for compression of uh, point cloud attributes uh, by the Blob GFT paper. Uh, they consider um, a point cloud like the ones shown here and they partition it into small blocks. For each block, such as this, uh, you can build a graph with weights uh, inversely proportional to the distance between the points. Then, given this graph, you can compute its Laplacian and the GFT. You can apply the GFT to the attributes and then you obtain one low pass coefficient and several high pass coefficients. These coefficients are then quantized and entropy coded. And since most of the coefficients are very small, this will lead to a high compression ratio. Now, this transform to achieve good performance requires large blocks. This is because when the blocks are too small, the geometry cannot be fully exploited. Uh, on the other hand, the complexity of this transform increases with the size of the blocks. Uh, that's because the complexity of graph construction and uh, GFT computation increases as well. Uh, even though this is the, it has these complexity issues, the overall complexity of the transform is still linear in the number of points. However, typical data sets uh, for, to achieve good coding performance, we need uh, block sizes in the order of hundreds. The original adaptive graph Fourier transform is, provides a multi-resolution representation for the point cloud attributes. It's also orthogonal, has the zero DC property, which means that if the input to the signal is a constant attribute, then the RGFT will provide the sparsest representation. And also the complexity is almost linear in the size of the point cloud. Uh, the RGFT algorithm can be described as this and is inspired by the block GFT. Uh, we start with a point cloud at resolution L. We partition the points into blocks, and at each block we apply a block transform. For each block, we have a DC coefficient denoted by a red square and several high pass coefficients. Uh, DC coefficients are grouped together, and then you can put these DC coefficients as attributes in a lower resolution point cloud, and then you can repeat the process. You can group them into blocks and apply this approach again. And then at the input of this iteration, you will have a high resolution point cloud, and at the end, you will have a lower resolution point cloud. Now, the main contribution of this work is a method to choose the multi resolution approach, how, how to choose the multi resolution, and also how to choose the block transform so that the full RGFT has the desired properties, which are complexity, which is achieved by exploiting the OCT tree structure. Orthogonality can be obtained by choosing all the transforms to be orthogonal or the block transforms to be orthogonal. And the zero DC property 
uh, requires a little bit more work and we will discuss it in the following slides. Now the, uh, the RAGFT algorithm can also be described as a tree where we start with a full resolution point cloud uh, and each point corresponds to a leaf. Inner nodes correspond to an intermediate resolution point cloud and the root correspond to a lowest resolution point cloud. This way the, the algorithm will go from high resolution to low resolution and will propagate uh, after applying the GFT to each block, it will propagate the DC coefficient to a lower resolution level. In, in this case, DC coefficients are represented by squares. The multi resolution representation for point clouds can be uh, obtained very easily. Let's start with an arbitrary point cloud and we look at just a region to make things a little bit easier to understand. Uh, we only look at the geometry, we don't need the colors for this. Uh, so we start by partitioning the point cloud as with the block GFP. Then for each of these blocks, we can choose one point and do a downsampling and then we obtain a lower resolution point cloud. This process can be repeated and we obtain a lower and lower resolution point cloud and so on. Uh, this, this method of obtaining multi-resolution point clouds only depends on the point cloud geometry. Uh, the partitioning and downsampling can be implemented by exploring the octree structure in n log n time. There are at most log n resolution levels, and these smaller point clouds are where we are going to put the DC coefficients as attributes. Now we show how to obtain the zero DC property. First, consider a constant or one signal denoted here by a yellow signal. We partition the point cloud in blocks. And for each block, we apply the block GFT. Let's consider the i block. This block has n i points, and we can build a Laplacian denoted by L. Since L times one is equal to zero, that means the all constant vector is an eigenvector of the Laplacian. Therefore, the DC coefficient is the inner product of the constant vector with this eigenvector, which is equal to the square root of n i. Since the eigenvectors are orthogonal, all the high pass or AC coefficients are equal to zero. As shown in the previous slide, we can obtain now a downsample version of this point cloud. And at each point, we can assign a DC coefficient. Note that, note that in the full resolution point cloud, all the, the signal looks constant, while in the lower resolution point cloud, the signal no longer looks constant. How so if we try to repeat the process described before, basically partition in the point cloud by looking at a block, for example, that block, now since the signal doesn't look or is not constant anymore, we need to take a different approach to, to achieve the zero DC property. So what we do is let's consider the, let's say note by A in IJ, the square DC coefficient of this block J. We refrain the Q, the Q vector like this and a diagonal Q matrix like this, and we define the Q normalized Laplacian LQ as Q to the minus one half times the combinatorial Laplacian computed as before, and times Q to the minus one half. The block transform therefore is given by the eigenvectors of this Q normalized Laplacian. Uh, what's interesting about this Laplacian is that it's the C vector. It's given by Q to the one half times a constant. Therefore, the DC coefficient is the sum of the QIs and the AC coefficients are all zero. Now, the so DC property of the full array RAGFT can be obtained if we apply this, this approach to all the blocks. So we compute a Q-normalized Laplacian to all blocks and uh, at all resolutions, then each DC, if each DC coefficient is assigned a Q value, which represents its relative importance, then the Q values can be computed recursively using the multi-resolution representation. We can explain this using this uh, example from a few slides ago. We assign the Q value at the highest resolution equal to one to all the points. Then if we want to compute the Q value of a lower resolution DC coefficient, we just add the Q values of the higher resolution points. And then we repeat this for the second block and for the third block. And now if we wanna do it at the lowest resolution level at the root, we just add the Q values of the DC coefficients and we obtain this. Uh, the robust transform is closely related to two 
uh, well-known transforms, the RAT and the block GFT. Uh, the regional active heart transform can be seen as a special case of the RAGFT, where all blocks are, have size two, and also all transforms are separable. Uh, as we shown earlier, the block GFT corresponds to the one level RAGFT. In terms of complexity, RAGFT and RAT have the same complexity, while the block GFT has linear complexity. In practice, however, the RAT is much faster uh, since the block GFT and the RAGFT depend on the block size. In terms of coding performance, the block GFT and the RAGFT are usually better because they exploit geometry information. Uh, the RAGFT is, since it's a hybrid of both, uh, allows us to explore other performance complexity trade-offs. Uh, now we're, I'm going to talk about attribute compression. Uh, we consider the 8i dataset of dynamic point clouds. Uh, this data has four sequences and we will compress the colors in the YUV domain. Uh, for this, we use a standard transform coding scheme uh, where we compare three different transforms, the RAT, the, RAT, the block GFT, and the RIGFT. Uh, we use, everything else is fixed, so we use uniform quantization and run length golden rice entropy color, which adapts to the statistics of the input. Um, for the block GFT, we consider the block sizes 2, 4, 8, and 16, and for the RAGFT, for the first level, we use the same settings as the block GFT, and for the lower resolution levels, uh, we set all block sizes equal to 2. Here we see results for the long dress sequence. We can see that for smaller block size, our proposed method outperforms the RAT by around half a dB. Uh, moreover, for, every for all parameters, the RIGFT always outperforms the RAT. And for larger block size, the RIGFT approaches or outperforms the block GFT. Uh, we can see improvements of up to two and a half dB over RAT for this sequence and for all the other sequences as well. Now, visually, if we, if we compare the proposed method and the RAT at the same distortion level, we can see that the proposed method has fewer artifacts and looks, looks much better. Moreover, uh, our proposed method has, can save up to 8.8 .8 in bit rate with respect to the RAT. In conclusion, we have proposed a new transform for compression of 3D point clouds. Uh, this transform has several desired properties, including multi-resolution, low complexity, orthogonality, and zero DC property. Also, the RAGFT achieves better complexity rate distortion trade-offs than other approaches. And it also can outperform uh, the RAT and the block GFT in terms of compression. Thank you. You can find the code in our website, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have.